Hey friends, what is up and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title of today's video, I wanted to sit down and talk to you about the books that I read over the last week. Now, to address something really quickly, I have been pretty absent on social media. I haven't really been on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that. I'm posting periodically, but I just wanted to talk about that. So basically what has been happening is my mental health over the last three weeks has really taken a nosedive. A couple of things have added to that, but basically what I've been trying to do is just get myself in the right mindset again. So the last week or the last three weeks, I have been vlogging. I've been trying to create videos I've been really excited about, but for some reason, because of the way that I'm feeling, I've been really uninspired. And I know a lot of people can really feel like that. And I've always been pretty open on here about, and even on social media about how I'm feeling. But recently I've been seeing a lot of people kind of get commented on or talked about in a way that they are seeking views or attention because of their mental health. So there was a vlog that was supposed to go up this week. And the reason why it didn't is because in that vlog, I was pretty honest about how I've been feeling and what I've been going through. And I didn't want that to translate into me trying to seek views or attention or anything like that. So I didn't end up uploading that vlog, this week's vlog. And the footage from that vlog was actually from the last three weeks. So the last three weeks, I've been feeling really, really down and really uninspired and unmotivated. And the two weeks prior to this one, I've been trying to force myself through that and been trying to work through that and just like focusing on making content and things. And the last week it just became impossible for me to do. So I haven't really been able to do that. Um, and I didn't want to, like I said, upload a vlog that is just me being sad, basically. I mean, a lot of that vlog, I did cry and I did, you know, just, I mean, it's like I said, it was three weeks worth of footage and most of the footage that I did put up was just me being really sad and I didn't really want to put that out there. Um, I think that sometimes, most of the time, if not all the time, it's okay to be open about how you're feeling. I think that you guys are basically my friends. So talking to you about how I'm feeling is really important to me. But sometimes it can become... I know I'm misconstrued in a way and I just think that because of how I was feeling and just how bad I was feeling, I really wanted to keep it to myself and I've been kind of talking to my friends about it and being open and honest about it, but right now I just don't think that it was the right time to really address like how I've been feeling. I think that I'm still trying to work through some stuff and there's a lot going, behind, going on behind the scenes that people don't really see and I'm trying to basically this week just focus on like exciting things that are coming up. You know, we're planning vacation in Florida and that's been like the one thing that's really been keeping me going and I mean, I've, I've just been feeling really, really low and I didn't want to upload that. But today I did want to sit down and at least talk to you guys about the books that I read this week. I did read four books. A lot of them brought me joy when I was feeling really down. And I think that if you are looking for something that's going to make you feel better when you're feeling down, it can be something as simple just to take your mind off of how you're feeling. I think reading video games, going for walks, going out with your friends can really help. And a lot of the books that I read definitely added to the overall enjoyment of my week and definitely helped me get through that week. So I do want to sit down and talk to you guys about what I read. The first book that I read, I actually got in my Bay Crate unboxing, which I got, obviously I'll put a link here for you guys if you guys want to watch it. Um, and that would be Faker. This is by Sarah Smith. This is the first novel that she's ever written. It follows our main characters, Emmy and Tate. And the reason why I think this book it's, it's like a romance contemporary like adult novel and I think that if you guys saw my video on how contemporary saved my life, this is definitely one of those books. So it is pretty lighthearted. Emmy works for a company called Nuts and Bolts, which is basically, you know, like what you would think if you go into like a store that sells like nails and paint and primarily a male workspace. And the reason why I think this really affected me is because Emmy has this exterior that she wears all the time, like she's a badass and she doesn't care and she's got really thick skin, but at home and with her family and friends she's a lot more soft and like I don't know just like sensitive in a way and Emmy works with a man named Tate who she absolutely hates who she thinks also hates him and one day they are thrown together at Tate's recommendation to work on a project Nuts and Bolts is actually building a home for this family that really needs one it's like kind of like a PR thing that they're doing as well as just like they're like a good company who wants to help and so they start working together and things go from there I don't want to spoil too much of the book the reason why I really like this is because by the end of the book Emmy realizes that that hard exterior that she has where she doesn't let things get to her and she just kind of lets it like go you know off of her shoulders and she just like lets it go she starts to realize that that part of her and the sensitive part of her 
are one and the same. Like she's not putting on an act when she tries to be really hard and, you know, just like really strong. That is who she actually is. And I really enjoyed that because that's definitely how I live my life. I am a really sensitive person, but most of the time I try to just act like things don't get to me. I just kind of like let it go. Like people are going to say what they want to say and do what they want to do. And you get to choose how that really affects you. And I've always thought that's just like a defense mechanism that I have. And I realized that maybe that's just a part of who I am that I know when to pick and choose on battles that I want to fight or don't want to fight and I really appreciated that with Emmy. Another really cool thing about this book is it does address like sexual harassment in the workplace. Now there is a little bit of a gray line here because I feel like sometimes Emmy does sexually harass other people in the workplace, especially Tate, and it's kind of just like joked about, but obviously it is sort of reciprocated at the same time. And so it, there's a little bit of a gray line. I did read that in one review and I can definitely see it, but overall I think that it was a really fun book. I ended up giving it four stars. I would recommend it if you're looking for something kind of like just fun and not too serious, not too deep. I definitely think that other than the way Emmy feels and like her connection with her family, Family, I think that it is, I don't know, I just, I thought it was really beautiful. And Emmy is from Hawaii, so there's a lot of conversation about Hawaii and the food there and like her culture and with her family. And I really enjoyed that aspect of the book as well. I definitely think when they were talking about like the food and stuff, I just like wanted to taste it. And Emmy's like obsessed with fruit and Tate brings her fruit all the time when she gets sick. And it's just, it was a really, really cute book. And I know this is like a hit or miss book and people are giving it kind of mixed reviews. And I don't know necessarily if I'm the best person to go for when it comes to like reviews on like adult contemporary and romance. You might want to tell try like Chelsea's channel. I'll leave Chelsea's channel down below. I don't know if she's talked about this or not, but overall I really enjoyed it and that was all I was looking for with this book was just something to take my mind off of how I was currently feeling. So I did really like it nonetheless. Now the next book I read is actually This One Summer. I did have this on my TBR and the reason why I was going to read it kind of fell through, but I did still want to read the book because I'd heard that it was a banned book at one point and I kind of wanted to know why. Basically this book follows Rose and her family and they go to this like house that they rent over the summertime and she has a friend Wendy that lives in the same town over the summer as well. Um, the reason why I think this book was banned originally is because it does talk about a, a bunch of really heavy topics. There is teen pregnancy in this book, there is miscarriage in this book, Rose's mom does suffer a miscarriage, and there's a lot of like drug and alcohol use with younger characters as well. I really like this. I ended up giving it four stars and I think because it has such heavy topics in the book but is like I always say like more digestible I think that there's two ways that you can approach heavy topics. You can do very in your face like this is something that happens and be very blunt about it or you can kind of try to I don't want to say dress it up but surround it with things and like experiences as you're reading that make it so that you're thinking about it and you're but you're not like focusing on it so you're aware of what's happening but you're also aware of what's the rest of what's happening in the story and that's definitely this type of book. Like I said I gave it four stars. I think Rose and Wendy go through a lot. Wendy is I think a year a year and a half younger than Rose and Rose is about 15 16. And throughout the book, there is a lot of things that the younger girls are experiencing. They start watching horror movies for the first time and Wendy has a negative reaction to that. Wendy is also the adoptive daughter of the woman, obviously, of her mother at the time, but she goes to like dance classes and she talks about how everyone's like lesbian and like around her because her adopted mom, I think, is also a lesbian but it's really cool. So there's also like a lot of girl hate that happens in the book as well because one of the girls in the small town that they are in for the summer gets pregnant and she is a teen pregnancy and the boy who gets her pregnant is actually someone that Rose is interested in. So a lot of the time Rose hears one of the boys call the girls sluts and so she continues to say that and Wendy at one point in time points out like that's very sexist and you shouldn't say that. So there's a lot of I think heavy topics like I said that are addressed in this book and then also with Rose's mom having a miscarriage that was also a addressed as well and I think that it was realistically addressed with how her mom was feeling about um, her part in the miscarriage and how she's feeling like maybe she like her body is letting her down like she's letting herself down so I did really enjoy it the art in this book is absolutely stunning if you guys are looking for a really beautiful graphic novel this is definitely one of them I think that it was just done so well like the art in it I wish I could frame it it was absolutely beautiful I did borrow this from the library on my kindle and I am going to try to purchase it I really like the company who did the pub who does the publishing for this and um, they're called one second 
I believe they did a bunch of other novels that I read like Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. Uh, there's a few other ones. I'll put some pictures on the screen that I have read in the past and I just really really like the graphic novels that they do. I think the art is really good and I think the stories within them tend to be very important stories at the same time. So if you're looking for one that deals with sort of heavier topics, I think this is a good choice. Then the next book I read is a book that I think a lot of people have read at this point and I think was really really popular but I think for good reason and that would be Heartstopper Volume 2. I did sit down one night and just end up reading this. I did purchase the first one and then I purchased the second one pretty much immediately after but I didn't end up reading it. This follows Nick and Charlie. Nick is openly gay and out of the closet and Nick is not actually sure whether or not Charlie is gay but they become really really good friends and in the first volume they sort of, Nick sort of starts getting feelings for Charlie and isn't really sure like what he's doing because obviously Charlie is straight but Charlie is still really warm and welcoming and inviting to him despite the fact that Nick was outed, um, I believe his sophomore year, and he, so everybody knows that he's gay, but Charlie doesn't care. Charlie still wants to be his friend. And that sort of comes to a head in this volume. I don't really want to spoil what this is about, but I did end up giving it five stars. I think because of the representation in it, there is bisexual rep, there is gay rep, there is trans rep. There's so much rep in this, and it's done in such a organic way. I feel like a lot of the time a lot of rep can be shoved into books as like a gold star that says gay like I put these people in my book and look at look at me I did a good thing and and I really enjoy books like that and this book definitely doesn't do that. Like I said it feels very organic and the story between the two boys like their friendship is just so beautiful to me and I feel like there's a lot of times in this book where people have to stand up for Nick and the things that are happening to Nick and I really appreciate that. I think that it's important and this really stresses it to be an ally for people in your life that are struggling especially with sexuality with like wanting to be who they truly are and getting backlash for that. So I really appreciate that Alice kind of addresses that in this book and I really liked it. It definitely also has bits of it where you have to kind of evaluate who your friends are and whether or not people who are willing to do those things truly are good people and whether or not you want them in your life. So I did really appreciate this. I love the art as always. I think it's very basic but I think it's very beautiful and I know this is a web series and I think these are the last like I think it's like three four and six of the web series are in here and there is going to be another one and I'm really excited to own it. I think that these are beautiful and definitely graphic novels that I would recommend for people if they're looking for more resources because like I said it is a story about two boys being friends but it does have like a lot more like topics in it that I think are addressed like being an ally and standing up to your friends when they are saying things that are incredibly insensitive or just plain wrong or mean and I really like that so once again I did give this five stars and I would recommend it if you're looking for something lighthearted um but obviously queer at the same time. Now the next book I read is definitely very different from the other three that I read this month and the part of the reason why I read the other three is I've been wanting to read this book for a really long time but it is a very very heavy book to read and that would be The Wicked by James Newman. I talked about this a lot in my vlog that didn't go up so I'm really excited to talk about it now. I gave this four stars. What this follows is it follows the little family and they move to a small town in North Carolina and I'm going to disclaim as I talk about this book that there are very heavy topics in this that may trigger a lot of you so if you'd like to skip the bits of this I will put the book down when I am done talking about it but overall just as a general consensus here I really did love this book. I thought that like I said it dealt with a lot of really heavy topics. So the Littles move to a small town in North Carolina from their town in New York and the reason why they do that is Kate Little was actually raped while going to meet her husband David um, for dinner and David is an artist. He does art for books like this so that's really cool. It's kind of like meta in a way. But because that happens they do kind of decide that it's finally time to leave New York and go somewhere much quieter. So they move to a small town in North Carolina where Kate's brother Joel lives and the thing about that small town in North Carolina is there was actually a fire and I think like 60 children, 60 or 80 children actually died in the fire. It was like a foster home essentially out in like this field and it's a small town so everybody knew that it was happening. And the Littles moved to the small town in North Carolina um, to try to basically restart their life. But it doesn't really happen that way because the reason why the fire started is because there is a demon who lives under the town who basically is trying to, if you're familiar at all with gods, basically gods are only as strong as the people that believe in them. So the more people that believe in them, the more strong that they get. And that's pretty much what happens in this book as well with the demon. His name is Moloch, M-O-L-O-C-H, I think is how you spell it. 
but the lot, a lot of the book addresses or has a lot of content in it that I think is really heavy. And because it is a very graphic horror novel, it's not really addressed in like a proactive way. Like there isn't a whole lot of like trying to talk people down from the wrong ways that they are feeling. There is a lot of murder in this, especially when it comes to younger children. The whole point of the novel is basically child sacrifice. That is like the overall arching theme of the book with the demon. Um, but there is obviously rape in this book. There is a lot of homophobia in this book. I mean, very, very graphic homophobia at the same time. David has trouble connecting with Kate again because he doesn't believe that the baby in her stomach is actually his. He does believe that it is from the rape that occurs. There's also very graphic sex in this and a lot of sexuality. So a lot of the reviews that I was reading about the book is that it is like a horror erotica kind of book. Now I will say the sex that happens is between two characters that are consenting and then at the end of the book there is a bit more sex and that is just because it's like debauchery like the entirety of the last bit of the book but most of the time what happens in this book is there is a lot of sexual themes that are addressed so we address masturbation we are also addressing like there's one point in the book where breastfeeding is like sexualized um revolving around the demon at the same time so like i said this is a very very heavy book there's a lot of violence a lot of I don't know, just very, some things that I think would make people feel very icky. And part of the reason I was reading these other books is because I wanted to make sure that I was supplementing reading something so heavy with reading a lot of things that are very light. And that is why I did that. But like I said, overall, I did really enjoy this book. I know it's not going to be for everyone, but if you are looking for a really intense horror novel, this is the way to go. This is very different from anything I've read in a long time. So a lot of the horror that I have read has been Stephen King or has been like Scott, uh, Scott Thomas and a bunch of just like more minor horror books. This is very much so like a grim, grim horror book. And it was perfect for the season for me. But like I said, even me as a fan of horror, it was a book that I needed to supplement with like lighter hearted reads. So if you're looking for something very graphic, very horror, very gritty, very sexual, this is the book to go to. But as I said, there are some very heavy topics and themes in here. So be careful upon going into this if you are interested in reading it for the Halloween season. All right, guys, so that is everything that I have read over the last week. Very all over the place. I've been, I've already started my next reads for this week, and I'm really excited to get into those. But those are the books that I've read for this week. Let me know down below what you've read, what you've loved, what you've disliked. I'm really excited to say that all of these were four-star reads for me. I did really enjoy them, and that is a good reading week for me no matter what. So I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in my next video.